Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We've got kind of an early Fender Friday today, but this Stratocaster, I fell in love with this thing, so I knew I had to share it one of these days. So this is a master-built Fender Custom Shop 56 Stratocaster done up by Greg Fessler in 2009. So it's about 11 years old, so this is nothing brand new or anything. But wow, take a look at this. I'm not normally a fan of like abstract art and things like this, but the color palette on this one is just fascinating to me. Starting off with our top horn, we've got this red bulbous figure. You've got a lot of light purples, there's some light blues, really striking reds that really pop out at you as compared to everything else on this. You've got some black, and you've got some mint green going on here. I mean, these are like all my favorite shades of these colors. You could really take a good long hard look at this and say whatever you want it to be because that's kind of the beauty of abstract art. It can represent whatever you want. I see a lot of red teardrop shapes so perhaps that resembles suffering and all this other blue and melancholy colors are telling you that you're playing a game of life and you're losing. And that's the face as you realize that you need to turn to music in order to get your life back. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit out there. But take a look at that pick card. It just kind of blends in. And I love the checkered board effect. Because the cream coloredness right there matches your pickup covers. So that's looking pretty cool. I only wish that they would have done maybe a little bit something more special on this trem bar. Like did a different coloration on here. I'm kind of surprised by their choice to leave the output jack still chrome. They could have painted it if they really wanted to. But at the same time, that's a real statement. It kind of jumps out and gets you. And judging by these photos, it looks like this has been completely glossed over, so this would have a really nice shiny vibe to it. So that's the story of the face of the body, but now take a look at that fretboard. If the rest of this guitar was done up like this and that they hadn't bothered to do the fretboards, this would not have been cool. But this, it's so visually striking. What's our pattern here? One, two, three, four. So every fourth one is black? No. It doesn't actually appear to have any sort of real pattern that we can see based on these. I think that's part of the beauty of it. So you'll have the shiny frets, potentially, and then the inlays on here. It's a white with black. It looks like you got another one right there, and then red with a black center. And then there's a blue one with a black center, all while having all these different colors that make up the rest of this guitar, you know, alternating on this fretboard. You certainly don't see one like this every day. And then you switch over to the back. This just reminds me of like a super happy party. So up here you're suffering, you need to turn to music, but once you know how to do the music, you go to the back, you're having this great party because these are like balloon shapes to me. So it's like a clown's guitar. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. <laughs> oh man, some rock and roll clown at some kid's birthday party needs this guitar. And I like the whole checkered board thing. You could also say that's a return to normality because you no longer have these other colors within your board. You know what game you're playing now. But just a nice bulbous back here. It looks like we have a Fender Custom Shop neck plate on this one. And I wish they had more photos of the back of the neck because it looks like this one has a similar vibe as the rest of this. But we can at least see the back side of the headstock. You can see his signature decal right there. It looks like just your standard tuners on this one. But check out the face of the headstock. That one kind of reminds me of the back of the guitar as well. And this really helps show like the different gradients of colors that they went in with this. It's not like a solid green part. They've got like the lighter greens. They've got almost white right there and all the in-betweens. I mean, that's pretty much true for all these different color segments. I mean, you can also check that out on the fretboard itself. You know, there's some blue, purple, some white. I really dig this black area with the red pipings. It looks like we've got the uh, vintage style tuners on here as well. And then from this angle, when you can see all that stuff on the side, the blue side of the neck, I mean, it kind of looks like a mess, but a beautiful mess. I'm just curious if they took the time to paint underneath the pickguard at the same time. I was actually contemplating purchasing this one for a full review and demo because I just thought it was that fascinating. But there was one thing that stopped me on this guy. I mean, it's got its COA, it's got a bunch of the original case candy, but what's this stuff? The original owner replaced the stock pickups in a collectible guitar. Oh man, I'm sure it sounds pretty good, but the original Fender Custom Shop stuff probably isn't that bad. And the other thing that stopped me was the vintage spec seven and a quarter inch radius. 
I'm not a big fan of that radius based on the ones that I've had. I tend to prefer nine and a half and higher on my Fender guitars. But the spec of a soft V neck shape, I actually like that. That would be pretty cool. And they're saying right here that the painted fretboard, it just feels like a normal fretboard. And I can, I can understand that because once you have that glossy clear coat over top of it, yeah, I mean, it's just gonna feel like any other guitar. But it's interesting that somebody actually played this one. Heaven forbid somebody buys a master-built art piece like this and they actually play it, right? <laughs> I think that's definitely evident with them swapping out the pickups for something that suited them better. But I guess in 2009, Greg Fessler built these, but it was artist Dave Newman that did the paint job. Let's see, what else has this guy done? Ooh, looks like this is potentially our culprit right here. You can kind of see some of those same colors that you have on this Stratocaster in this painting that he's done. Oh, okay. So this must be something that I'm just not familiar with. He apparently works with Fender quite a bit. Or these are just similar guitars. I'm not going too far into this. Wow, look at those guys. That's a little bit too crazy for my own personal tastes. I like how this one's crazy, but not you know, too over the top crazy. You can still understand what's going on here without getting your magnifying glass out. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't say I'm a big fan of this one, but they do have that whole alternating color thing, and that's like his signature dot inlays on there. I kind of like this Telecaster right here, though. It's a little bit less chaotic. This looks like a uh, Walking Dead signature Stratocasters. That's a little bit scary, but cool. Something just a little bit different that I didn't know existed, and apparently he's done quite a few works for Fender. But I'll have to say that this one's definitely my favorite of his works that I've seen. So now you either hate it or you love this thing, but how much is it? Well, it's for sale by Thunder Road Guitars in Seattle, Washington, and they're asking $10,099 for it and $75 shipping. When it comes to these art guitars on the used market, I mean, it's worth as much as somebody's going to pay. I was kind of hoping I could get it maybe around six or seven because I, I think they're about right. Somebody that has the disposable income that falls in love with this, they'll pay 10 grand. I, I don't think that's too much to ask for this one. I mean, it's such a unique, interesting piece. Definitely not for everyone though, but it looks like it weighs seven pounds, 10.4 ounces. I don't think I'll be able to find a playing sample of this one, but I'll try to find you guys an interesting master-built Greg Fessler creation. <laughs> this episode's running a little bit short, I thought I would share this guitar. It kind of spoke to me as well. This thing has been listed a few different times. The first time they had like Elvis in the title. It made me think, you know, with this photo right here, is that the actual guitar Elvis used during that iconic 68 comeback special show? Uh, no, it's just, you know, the same model, but take a look at this thing. So the story behind this one is it belonged to a prominent South African guitarist that toured the world with this thing. And man, is this a beautiful guitar or what? It's got that old timey Gibson feel to it, that super custom looking truss rod cover, the super 400 inlays. And then you take a look at the back of the neck. You can tell it's been on a stand because it's got the stand rash areas right there. But super flamed three piece neck here, two parts maple, one part walnut. But even the back has some exceptional figuring on this. And you can just tell that this guitar has been used a lot. Just take a look at that vintage Lifton case here. That is tattered and beaten all out. And look how ambered over this is, especially on that headstock. The owner definitely loved this one. We've got the original PAF in the bridge, but unfortunately this one has been replaced early on with an early patent number T-top pickup. And it's got all the typical weather checking that you'll find on these spruce tops and a few repaired cracks they're saying. But what a super 400 guitar this is. 
I especially love this. I've yet to own a guitar that has a special inlay on the back of the headstock. That's why this one was kind of tempting for me. I mean, this just has everything that you love about these old arch tops. And I believe this is a photo of the original owner that used it all those years. So just kind of a cool little guitar. I don't know a lot about the history of this particular model, but you do have a Florentine cutaway. And it's actually starting to come down to, you know, reasonable prices. We'll see, what do these things actually normally list for? Oh, that's interesting. Robin Egg Blue. <laughs> Here's a 68 that listed around 76. Here's a natural around four grand. I'm not sure what might be wrong with that. Here's another burst, but I mean, these guys don't even have true PAFs in them. I'm not really finely tuned with this market, but that actually seems to be a pretty good deal. I think what's scaring people away is it's coming from South Africa. A lot of people, when they see something listed overseas with a country they're not familiar with, they just automatically assume it's a fake guitar. I mean, these things can travel all over the world. So sometimes you can get good deals if you're willing to import them back. According to the Vintage Guitar Price Guide, it puts the 1960s to be worth between 8000 to 10 and a half. I don't see that many of them on the market, so maybe this one is a little bit more, and it's not quite the same look as that Elvis one. It's got more of a rim burst job going on. And who knows what types of repairs that this thing's had. The only question left, would you rock the abstract Stratocaster or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.